All right, previously we said that in materials, you can have this huge span of different electrical conductivities, 28 orders of magnitude. So why on earth are some materials so dang good at conducting electricity, like silver, right? And some materials are so bad at conducting electricity, like polymers or a lot of ceramics, right? Before we explain that, we first have to introduce the idea of band gaps and energy bands in materials. So where do these come from? Right? So band gaps arise from the fact that you have different orbitals that electrons can fill. Right? So in our very simplistic picture, overly simplistic in a lot of ways, you have your nucleus, right? and you have these orbitals that go around it. Right? And so we learned about these early in the semester, our S, P, D, and F orbitals. Right? And these are discrete energy levels. Right? So what happens when you get two atoms that are kind of close to each other? Right? So we have this one, and it has its orbitals what happens is that these orbitals can physically, the clouds can overlap one another. If they overlap the same volume of space, what do we know? Now all of a sudden you've got electrons in each of these orbitals that are occupying the same, potentially the same energy level in the same space. That would mean that they would have to have the same quantum numbers and that would be viol a violation of the Pauli exclusion principle. So that cannot happen. If it can't happen, then how do we get around it? Well, what we have to have happen is that these, en these electrons, if they occupy the same volume of space, then they have to have slightly different energy levels. There has to be a really small split, at least, in the energy levels. And that's what we sap see happening here. So I'm going to get rid of this red atom. Um, but you see here in this diagram, if you have a lone atom, it's just fine. Its elements can occupy, its atoms can occupy energies at distinct levels. But if you bring in another atom, right next to it and they overlap a little bit, now they have to have a splitting of the energy levels. And if you bring in more and more atoms, they have to split more and more and more to account for different spots so that you never violate the Pauli exclusion principle. And by the time that you generate, you know, a solid, which essentially has infinite, you know, it has a very, very large number of atoms all in close proximity to each other, then instead of having discrete energy levels, these things start to look like a band. So the band technically is made up of a bunch of discrete levels, right? These are discrete levels here in this picture right there, but they're so close together that the difference between them is something like 10 to the minus 22 electron volts. So what it might as well be is instead of being discrete, it becomes a band, a continuous band of spots that you can fill up in your now band of allowable electron states. Okay. Then if you take into account how close these atoms are, right here, we showed how close they are, just arbitrary, some distance there. As you squeeze them closer and closer together, you go from distinct uh, energy levels to now bands, that's these bands starting to form. And then depending on where your equilibrium distance is, which they're labeled as A here, we've been calling it R naught this semester, all of a sudden you can get regions like between these two points. In that region there, it is a forbidden energy state. There is no available spots for electrons to occupy at that energy level, right? There are spots above it and there are spots below it. The spots below it, let's say that those are filled up, we call this the valence band, right? That's our valence band, the energy levels that are below the gap. And then you have what's called the band gap. And then you end up with a conduction band where you have more seats, more spots where you can put electrons that are allowable states. So um, this is a little bit hand wavy for this class. You need to learn more about quantum mechanics before we dive into this in greater detail. But for this class, just think of them like empty seats. The ones below the band gap, right? Maybe those are filled. Right, and so that's our valence band. And there are seats above, but you have to get promoted in terms of energy above that band gap to then occupy those seats, okay? All right, so that's this idea of a band gap, and below it, again, we have our valence bands, uh, right? There can be multiple of those. All these bands are filled down here. These are all filled bands. And then above it, there's lots of potential open seats where you could put electrons, but since they're not filled yet, we call those conduction bands. Um, so now we need to introduce this idea of the Fermi energy. EF. What is the Fermi energy? The Fermi energy has a specific definition. It is the energy with the highest filled electron state if you were at zero Kelvin, right? So there's all these states, right? These are all available states over here. And you have X number of electrons in your material. So you've got all these electrons, right? You start to fill them into these bands, right? You start to fill them up. And at zero Kelvin, wherever you run out of electrons, you draw a line there and that is your Fermi level, right? Your Fermi energy, all right? This all of a sudden gets us to the point where we can start to understand how different materials have such different electrical properties, right? In some materials, the Fermi level is filled up 
in the middle of the band gap, meaning that all these below it are totally filled and all these above are totally empty, right? That would be an example of a semiconductor or an insulator. But if it's a metal, what happens is that you've got your band, right? Let's say that you have a band right here, which has potentially spots that you can fill, but your Fermi level only fills up half of your band. So now you've got empty seats right there next to your filled seats. And so what your electrons can do is they can really easily get promoted to these seats. They take, they leave a little hole from where they were before, they jump up, right? It jumps up and now it can occupy those seats. And because it's right in the middle of the band, there's no real penalty. There's no big energy needed to do this. But you can imagine that you would have to jump across the band if it was a big band gap, right? If you were filled down here, but empty seats were up there, now you'd have to jump all the way across that, okay? So that is the difference between metals, semiconductors, and insulators. We're going to show you more of this in our next video.